Question number two, Maureen Pugh. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. What recent reports has he received on the New Zealand economy? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, um, I'm advised uh, today that uh, today was the first release by Statistics New Zealand of labour market statistics data using an updated survey method that is technology neutral and improves international comparability. The decision to change the survey method was made by the government statistician who is statutorily independent. The decision was not made by the government. Today's release shows unemployment fell by 0.1 per cent to 5.1 per cent, with particularly large reductions in Auckland, down 1.2 percentage points, to where unemployment in Auckland is now measured at 4.7 per cent, and unemployment among, unemployment among women has dropped 0.8 per cent to 5.4 per cent. The survey also points to strong job growth during the quarter. Supplementary. Order. Order. I'm about to call Maureen Pugh, but I don't want a continuation of the conversation between Mr Joyce and Mr Little. Maureen Pugh, supplementary question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What is the outlook for jobs and wages? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the outlook will be... Uh, fairly positive if the current momentum is maintained. Stats New Zealand calculate 105,000 105, extra jobs were created in the last year and 251,000 over the last three years. Uh, they advise that recorded jobs growth is supported by other labour market indicators. They report that annual average wages have increased 24.9 per cent to more than 58,000 uh, since the end of 2008, more than double 12 per cent inflation over the same period. There are more jobs and people are being better paid. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. To the Minister of Finance, are ANZ correct when they say today, and I quote, due to methodological changes, many of today's figures need to be taken with a grain of salt, particularly the surge in employment. Statistics New Zealand have cautioned against quarterly comparisons. In fact, in many ways, they look meaningless, end quote. <laughs> the Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, ANZ have every right to have an opinion about the numbers, as, as, as does the government. However, they refrain from attacking the impartiality of the government statistician. Order. 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 Again, this is a point of order, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Point of order, Mr Speaker. My, my question asked uh, the Minister of Finance if ANZ were correct in that statement. Uh, I didn't get an answer to that question. Yeah, and on this occasion, order. On this occasion, I think the question has been addressed. The Minister immediately said that is ANZ's opinion. Supplementary question? Supplementary question, Maureen Pugh. What else do the labour market statistics tell us about the job market? The Honourable Bill uh, English. Well, Mr Speaker, the uh, government statistician has introduced a new measure of underutilisation. Uh, which hasn't been measured before. It measures the number of people who could work more if given the opportunity. Uh, and the published underutilisation rate is 12.8%. Uh, this compares to the OECD average of around 14.1%, uh, and somewhat surprisingly, compares to Australia's underutilisation rate of 21.8% not much short of double the New Zealand rate. Supplementary question, Maureen Pugh. What other reports has he seen about the Household Labour Force Survey? The Honourable Bill... Well, English. Mr Speaker, there are a range of reports about the uh, economic relevance or importance of the data, including some people who question, for instance, quarterly comparisons, because the HLFS data does move around from quarter to quarter. 
Others, however, have made comments around the impartiality of the government statistician, including, and I quote, that the government actively manipulates official data, which is absolutely wrong. Order, order, order. order. There's no need for that question to continue any longer. I consider it's in a, a, a question that will be in breach of Standing Order 1975. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Why is the government taking credit for a quarterly increase in employment that is 70 per cent higher than ever recorded before, which ANZ have said should be taken with a grain of salt, and that Statistics New Zealand cautioned against making exactly the quarterly comparison that Stephen Joyce did in his media release today? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, the government isn't taking credit, it's simply stating the numbers as published. And is simply stating the numbers as published. Because we accept that the government statistician is statutorily independent. If the numbers go up, it's because the numbers have gone up, not because the government statistician is manipulating the numbers, as that member has claimed. And he should know since he represents more public servants than anyone else in the parliament, it's a disgrace. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Order. 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 Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Does the minister consider it a disgrace that the Minister of Finance stood in this House and said that Statistics New Zealand's statement that inequality in New Zealand had grown under his watch was statistically invalid? Is that a disgrace as well? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, I certainly didn't accuse the statistician of uh, being manipulated by the government and certainly would not do that. Uh, we, have our own, we have our own arguments with, with how numbers are put together, but in the end, that's why they're independent. Uh, and with respect to those conclusions, I passed on the advice I was given, which I understand was legitimate statistical analysis, that the conclusions they drawn were not statistically valid. Uh, since then, I've had further advice that on balance, they probably were. Question. Question 